Despite the fact that Klay Thompson's first season after missing two years saw him bounce back into the player we all know and love, helping the dubs to another parade in the Bay Area, he still wasn't completely the two-time All-NBA player he once was. While it's scary that Golden State still won the chip with a recovering Klay, it's presumable that his second season back will see the man with the 18th most three-pointers made of all time be even better than he was in 2022. Speaking of increased production, 23-year-old Jordan Poole's fourth pro campaign should see him be in the race for the Sixth Man of the Year award after being snubbed by the media as the most improved player. President Bob Myers signing Dante DiVincenzo will take a ton of the pressure off Jordan during the bench minutes, concurrently allowing the rising star to display more of his talented movement without the ball in his hands. But can Dante and Deadpool build up the right continuity, and can Clay legitimately get back to a prime version of himself? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 13.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And for dope NBA mixtapes you can't miss, make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. The newest warrior, Dante DiVincenzo, fits right in with the Golden State Warriors' space and pace, high volume three-point shooting system, given he's got the ability to blow past defenders off the dribble to create opportunities for either himself or his teammates, and then relocate without the ball in his hands for spot-up attempts. Last season in Milwaukee for 17 games and in Sacramento for 25, Dante averaged a decent 9 points, 3 assists, and 1.1 steals in 24 minutes each night. He shot 46 of 109 on catch-and-shoot threes, a blistering 42.2% mark. Golden State's going to miss Peyton II's elite screen setting for a guard and his athleticism finishing plays as the roller, but in terms of shot creation off the dribble, that's where Dante has the clear edge. This past season, DiVincenzo's 16.1% assist rate was a career high. The man's capable of being a primary playmaker on a team. Scariest part is, he'll of course have much less responsibility than ever before in San Francisco. Expect DiVincenzo to heavily benefit off the gravity drawing and playmaking chops from Curry, Thompson, and Green. You can't forget a season before this past one, DiVincenzo started 66 games for the eventual championship winning Bucks in 2021. Dante missed the entire Bucks title run during the playoffs with a torn ligament in his ankle, but had a big impact in the locker room and with his regular season contributions as a player in the starting five. That campaign saw Dante make 37.9% of his 5.2 triples per night, making him an upgrade over Gary Payton II in terms of his value as a floor spacer. On this possession in a handoff action with Sabonis, even when being defended by the NBA's best guard defender in Drew Holiday, Dante simply jab steps to his right and shows off his above average ball control to his offhand, driving left past Drew, then despite being sandwiched by Holiday and Lopez and drawing the bodies of all five Milwaukee defenders, DiVincenzo has the awareness to whip an overhead kick out to the right wing, and as the ball swings around the perimeter, try to watch how DiVincenzo just swiftly relocates to the left corner leading to a wide open spot up triple. The balance and IQ it takes to manufacture that open look is very rare. It's that type of vision which made him a fan favorite for a championship winning organization in Cream City. This time against his future team, Metsu barely makes contact with Wiggins on this screen in a poorly spaced out high pick and roll on the far right side. Even the threat of Metu setting the pick though is enough for Dante to attack Andrew's lead foot go downhill under pressure, and drop a beautiful, underhanded dime for a Damon Jones dunk. Dante's an extremely shifty creator in the pick and roll, one who just needs the right situation to make a name for himself. In terms of his athleticism and defense, this interception on Jordan Poole shows off his instincts on that end, while this shocking putback over two Washington Wizards going for the board displays DiVincenzo's under-talked about vertical. Point being that when you mix the qualities that Dante provides in terms of his wherewithal being able to read defensive game plans with what the developing two-way beast in the backcourt Jordan Poole provides, which is basically a jumbo version of DiVincenzo, that's an extremely imposing combination of creators coming off your bench. Stephen Curry's late season ankle issues was primarily due to him logging significant minutes and having to carry a brunt of the ball handling responsibilities, if not all of the ball handling responsibilities, with Clay missing a majority of the year 
and then Gary Payton II going down in the postseason to Memphis, there was always a large chunk of pressure for Curry to create everything off the bounce for this Warrior team. But with Dante coming in, you have a high volume two-way player who the front office stole for a contract worth $9 million over two years, by the way, whose command of defensive attention, perimeter shot making, and also relocation resembles the two biggest creators for Golden State in Stephen Curry and Jordan Poole. In terms of his defense, DiVincenzo's foot speed and strength can cause problems for attacking guards. Problem is, bulkier wings are more of a handful, and he struggles to erase mismatches when he's forced to switch by properly communicating with the big man. He can do that at times, however. Dante isn't the versatile phenom who could play any position that Gary Payton II was, but where he thrives defensively is in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, where he's great at funneling his man towards the help defense around the basket, a trait which should mesh perfectly with Draymond Green backing him up. Moving on to Klay Thompson, who seemed to struggle with his efficiency in his first year back, but his numbers were still more than impressive given it was his first season after consecutive major leg injuries and surgeries. The marksman can still find more of a rhythm in terms of his shooting off the dribble, but as Game 6 Clay showed off all postseason long, he's still at the top of his game on this end of the court. For Thompson, it's going to be about his defensive efficiency. You should expect Thompson's lateral quickness and rotations to be much more on point in this upcoming season, with narratives like this one floating around on Twitter which state that Thompson's not currently a top 10 player, I expect a motivated KT in 2023, and also a healthier one. Can Clay become an all-NBA player again? Best answer gets next video shoutout, and the top five commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Two shoutouts from my last two uploads go to Dylan Popoff and Sarith Akura. Appreciate every answer. You tell the story and Community Speaks, so leave your take.